Felix here, and good morning to you. It is the day that the Fed will ruin for you. <laughs> That's the plan. Jerome Powell is due to speak in just over two hours, and I'll be live for that. I'm not going to be live for three hours nonstop. We'll take a breather, but we'll do our pre-market roundup here, and then we take a little bit of a breather, and then we'll come back to it. Um, important? Yes. Anything else happened that was important today? Well, let's have a look at the market first. Before we jump into that and look at which stocks are up, which are most at risk, what China has just done, and what you should be doing and to calm the freak out on a Friday like this. I am doing a live trading training on the 31st. Is that Friday? I think that's a Friday, isn't it? Next week, 31st at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And we're going to talk through how we made this happen. I'm going to not just talk through, I'm going to teach it to you. 72% up so far this year on return, uh, return on capital employed. And you might think that's not normal. You might think that's hard. You might think that's unusual. Not really, I would say. Uh, and I also think it's something that anybody can do who's got the capacity of, a, say, a 12-year-old, right? So uh, ADHD and all. Uh, and it's really not rocket science. And I'll teach it to you why, because you deserve to know how this bloody works. I should have told you this at school. So, see, so, Taluda Rigorese, my cat. Did you hear her? Good morning, everybody. Um, amazing rally yesterday. Yes. Well, well, I think I think our prediction that an Nvidia that wasn't going up at least ten percent after earnings was a disaster. Kind of, kind of came true, didn't it? Uh, later in the day, at least. If you look at the market here this morning, these are the top stocks by market cap. Pretty flat stuff. Nvidia is down a little bit. Meta down a little bit. Amazon up a third of a point. Microsoft up 0.24%. Everything is just sort of hovering around the zero mark. No one's willing to take any shots here this morning. QQQ is up. No, basically flat. Um, no movement at all. And that's kind of what the futures look like as well. There's not a lot going on here. Uh, and that's just because... Why would you do something in this pre-market when, unless you read Jerome Powell's speech, <laughs> right? If you're if you're an insider at the Fed, then insider trading, of course, is encouraged. But other than that, and unless you're in the soybean oil business, you are not really buying anything this morning. You're just waiting and sitting this out, right? That's my cat again. So we get today at 10 a.m. Michigan consumer inflation expectations. That's important. At 10.05, to give the man five minutes to digest that information and knock back another. Sherry uh, is Fed Chair Jerome Papa Powell, and his mission, I think, will be to make your day a gloomy one. <laughs> Let's see what he says. Last year, at this very event, he spoke and the S&P tanked 18% after that. 18%. So it could be an interesting Friday, and that's what we live for, right? Interesting Fridays are... Um, are good for traders. Uh, this is, by the way, the, the page you get to when you go to Felix Fenzel slash webinar, sign up and learn how we trade. And you can just select, there's only one date, uh, Thursday, actually, August 31st, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Come and join me for that. It's going to be it's going to be tremendous fun. And, and just learn how we are 72% up on RACE this year. Um, we did some trades yesterday. I did them live with you guys. And we made already on those $370. And that was a 15-minute time span. We got one more trade open. So not a bad hourly rate, right? You know, we're, we're aiming for a, more than $1,000 an hour. <laughs> um, and how much money did we use to set that up? We, we used about $3,200. So we made about 10 12% in a day. That's not bad, is it? Um, so come and learn it. It's just so many people reject new ideas. And I love people who are open to stuff. Here was, I, I uh, posted for you guys yesterday here as well saying, this is what's left. We took profits on um, Foot Locker as well. That was also yesterday. The closing AMDs, we were up 12% on that trade. Is that on here? Yeah, that's AMD Foot Locker. Those are the two we did yesterday. So only Citibank trade open today, and we'll see what happens there. Bank of America is the doom and gloomer at the party. It's like, I don't know, being in a nightclub and going, music sucks, doesn't it? Drinks suck. Hate the bar. You want to go somewhere else? Never not having a good time. That's kind of what Bank of America is. They're saying AI won't save tech stocks from trouble. Um, and they're basically saying monetary policy spells trouble for the sector. Just, you know, higher interest rates are, are bad. 
A tech stock set for a bigger slump this year. That's what they're saying. Suddenly they're becoming bearish, minus six percent. They probably came up with that at lunchtime yesterday, don't you think? Treasury saw a 28th straight week of inflows at 5.2 billion. Now that's true, and that means the people are buying government bonds, right? And that's because you haven't hit the like button yet. <laughs> um, you can look at your favorite stocks as well. Just ask the questions in um, in the chat here. And um, I'd be happy to look at anything at all that you want to ask. But the reason for this is that this insane government is creating more debt than anybody else has ever created. And they're issuing so much debt and people are willing to buy it because you're getting paid 4.5% for it or something. It's not a bad deal, actually. It's a, it's a fairly, fairly decent, decent offering. Uh, cash funds had $100 million pulled in last week. Um, have you seen this one? Where is it? The mug of all mug shots. The Donald uh, looking a little bit less orange than usual. Um, I like the forehead look forward. What was he thinking at that moment? Uh, he was thinking, this photo is going to win me this election. I think that's what he was thinking. Never surrender. He's raised $200 million. Like him or loathe him. No one's raising that kind of money. And winning elections is typically about money. It's been like that since Roman times. You need whoever had the most money to pay off voters won. And I think that's very much the, the fundamental basis of democracy. A lot of people are today going to be talking about this R. R. Uh, and R isn't the isn't recession, but R star. It's some sort of slightly absurd. Uh, real interest rate tax thing. Um, and Jerome Powell might reference it today. And I was wondering here is um, and one needing a doctorate in econometrics. I studied econometrics. Man, that was dull. Or a model filled the pages of lots of quotations to know that um, the trend level of interest rates has pushed higher. So essentially, it's saying like our interest rates staying higher as a permanent event. Remember 20 years ago, everyone said interest rates will forever be zero or 10 years ago. And now everyone's saying interest rates will forever be higher. Of course, they won't be forever higher, but they might be higher for a longer period of time. So we've got some real yields now here that are actually making money. So interest rates are now real interest rates, real yields are 1.3% or so. So when they're negative, money's free. When they're positive, kind of tanks the economy ever so slightly. And then we got this lovely chap. Look how happy he looks. Uh, he's speaking, as I say, at five minutes past 10. Let's have some questions then. If you've just tuned in, um, we're all worried about Papa Power ruining the party today. Apple, however, is up 0.4%. That's something that's a little bit positive, right? I'll show you a, a prettier chart. If you don't like reading lists, then this might be for you. Pre-market. My cat says she prefers visuals. Looks quite good so far, right? Um, but the fact that NVIDIA is red and Tesla is red has me a little bit worried. Come on, Talula, come on in. There's a cat complaining. All right, come on in. This cat literally has been sleeping on my desk for the last hour and a half, completely peacefully, not making a sound. As soon as I press the live button and close the door, she, of course, wants to go out. That's the way cats work. Just like it's all on my terms. They are quite marvelous, though. Um, Trump 2024, mm, indeed. X Punk, the only stock's green. Got a little bottle of wine ready for today. You think it's going to be that bad, do you? Capital Preservation Friday. Oh dear, the mood is pretty. Uh, um, Pelosi, she's probably traded already. Actually, she never trades. It's her husband, and they don't talk to each other. That's the way that works. SQQQ is one of the few things that's up about half a percentage point this morning. Uh, Mike, good morning. You joined the Academy yesterday. Brilliant. I look forward to seeing you. Um, my live call this weekend is on a Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I believe it's on a Sunday. So see you then, Mike. Look forward to that amazing rally yesterday, indeed. Um, Last time Tallulah showed up, we had a rate hike. Oh dear, Tallulah, we blame you for that. Are you going to follow the new earnings? I most certainly shall. I most certainly shall. Though the numbers are kind of neither here nor there. It's really like, are they going to give us guidance? I think that's really what we're all there for. 
we don't the, we know the numbers are not going to be great right that's just that's just because the quarter hasn't been great it just hasn't been so almost i think the bigger event is guidance and and what's the delivery number going to be the day after on the, on the on the first right that's really what it's all about if we look at neo here new up ever so slightly china is trying to stimulate the economy by um um easing mortgage mortgages essentially and um they reduced stamp duty on share prices that caused a 10 minute rally and then it fizzled out again it didn't really work if you look at something like parlant here and nvidia here it's completely flat pre-market that has never happened before and it's 0.07 percent up so pretty nasty day yesterday why well it's just nvidia 14 dollar support line still holding that was still where all the options were sitting last time i looked let's have another look pltr where do we look just look at this week, August 26th, and then on the right-hand side, look at the puts. Look where they're all sitting. Ooh, they're at 1350 now. They've moved down. They've moved down just a little, 50 cents, which is, yeah, that's a little bit more bearish here. So we're going to take this line down a notch. Uh, $40 is still somewhat of a, actually, no, 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 I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I, let, let me revise this. $14 is still there, but $13.50 is the stronger one. So actually, the $13 line has moved up to $13.50, uh, and the $14 has sort of fizzled out a little bit. I think that's the way to look at that. So the $13 line we have in here is still there, um, but the $14 is getting a little bit weaker, and we're coming down to $13.50. You know, I, think, I think that's probably the right way to interpret that. So that, those are our support lines, by the way, in case you were wondering. NVIDIA, the um, bringer of all rallies, That's a pretty big candle to lose all of those gains and then end the day basically flat is pretty, pretty unusual. Um, what was the chart? So was... I think some people are making the case here that this is a head and shoulders pattern. Let me see, can we do that on a week? No. So what, what does that mean? Well, some of the uh, lot out there are basically saying it's this. Right? That's what some people are saying. And uh, the, the, the not so good thing here is that we, and let me just get rid of that arrow again here because it's a bit big. But the trouble with yesterday, this is Palantir or, or SMP or anything, is that. We essentially didn't break through the 50-day moving average line. We sort of get close and then we bounce off it, and that obviously isn't very good. If you lose uh, the S&P, it's a little bit clearer, but it's the same idea, right? You have one peak here, maybe another one that's a bit of a crooked shoulder, and then that's the head. You come back down, and that's the right side shoulder. And you're bouncing off that 50-day moving average line, which is – bearish and therefore the idea being that you know you, you go down like that upper power will tell us what will happen today i think michael good morning to you alexander thinks the rest of this year will be bearish is it funny how like two days or something change, change the whole sentiment of the market it's been just like go, 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 go for months. And suddenly it's like, oh, no, 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 the party is over. The party is completely over. It's it's just sell, stick your head, head in the sand, bury the children in the backyard with the gold and buy ammunition. Um, I think that's the mood this morning. Let's have a look at the QQQ here pre-market, which is, of course, the NASDAQ. Uh, let's have a look at the minute chart. It's actually going up a little bit, 0.2% up. So this was yesterday after the market. Then we kind of closed 5, 6 p.m. Uh, a.m. rather. And then this morning, we're actually going up. And there's some crazy algorithm trades here this morning at 8 a.m. I don't know. Somebody fat fingered something. Uh, but yeah, that looks actually quite nice here. There's that, that little rally up. But it's not enough. 0.2% isn't really enough to, to do anything. Uh, can you review the AMD trade from yesterday, please? 
Yes. What was the AMD trade? AMD, we bought seven put verticals. Okay, let me show you what we did there. Also, this is never, never financial advice, just an educational illustration, hopefully, of what we got up to. So what did we do yesterday? We got in here, optionswatch.io, we clicked on AMD. And AMD had a pretty low IV yesterday of like eight, and it's shot up to 19. That's one of the reasons we made money so quickly. So because IV was so low, we selected, let me just move myself somewhere down here. We didn't do a credit spread. We did a debit spread because you actually benefit from rising IV with those. And, and, and then IV is super cheap. You know, that's what we're doing. So we, you know, we just did a, did a bearish setup. What, what, what was it? We did 112, 115. So we were up here. So we were literally saying, as long as we stay below $112, we make money. Um, and and we, the market did, and it, because it fell a little, and, and also because IV volatility went up, you know, we made our money and, and we made a return of 13% in a day, half a day, actually, very little time. So I don't know if you can see it, almost the AMD here. Um, what's the time difference between the two, opening it and closing it? An hour. Yeah? So that can happen if you're right on, 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 on volatility and direction, you can, you can in theory make 13% in an hour, the way, the way we did. So that was basically the setup, just looking at the chart is, is one thing. Uh, where did my chart go? So we were looking at this yesterday and going, well, the setup doesn't look positive. Um, we were below the 50 day moving average line. We've had in, having a sort of downward trend and Nvidia was just starting to turn, right? It was just, we're just starting to lose. And when you start to lose that momentum, then I kind of just felt the whole, the whole sector is going to come down. Plus really the Nvidia earnings in a sense were so good that it's bad for AMD either way. So that was just the, the call on that one. So, yeah. Um, so Loretta, appreciate you asking, where will the S&P be in 2035? Somewhere above where it is right now. That would be my, my best guess. But who knows? That's a long period. So you'd expect that to be significantly higher. Is it worth getting exposure to clean energy? Is there clean energy? <laughs> What's clean energy? Seriously. I think clean energy is a myth. Uh, there is energy that pollutes in a different form and in a different location. Um, you know, coal pollutes the air, kills you. Wind and pollutes the environment because you've got to build it everywhere. Even if you put them in the sea, it destroys the sea floor. Um, waves energy probably still screws up the sea and, and you know where fish are. Um, nuclear doesn't pollute immediately unless it blows up, but it does pollute wherever you bury the stuff and wherever you dig the uranium out of the ground. And um, it's pretty much the same for everything. There isn't just isn't. I mean, solar. Okay, what 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 do you make the um, the solar panels out of? Right, that requires mining somewhere that destroys the environment. So there is. I think it's a myth, clean energy. But should you buy it? Um, the reason I don't is because it's basically driven by government policies and subsidies. So I'm not really a big fan of that. So, but if you can find something with an amazing margin, go for it um, and let me know. <laughs> uh, what they mean is energy produced out of sight, out of mind. Yes, precisely. And, and that's just the way we are, right? Not in my backyard. I think that's very much the way it is. Um, I can actually see a power station from my, my, my balcony here. Um, in Hong Kong, the island south of where I am, there is a power station on there. It's a coal-fired power station. Um, I'd rather it wasn't there, to be honest with you. I mean, it's reasonably far away, but I'd rather it wasn't there. I'd rather they put it somewhere I wouldn't see it. <laughs> and that's just the way we're programmed, right? We don't want to know. How about C3 AI? Yeah, I, I'm not sure about that, honestly. I, I feel that might be a little bit of a bubble one, but take a look at nuclear stocks. Yeah, they've done pretty well. Uh, well, the 
good Bill Gates, you know, savior of the world and all that. He's he's fully behind nuclear. Yes, uh, that man, you know, the man who's, who's really got your best interest at heart with vaccinations and all of that. Uh, uranium, yes. And did you read our uranium trade? We put one out on our newsletter, Trading Floor Whispers. Link is in the, in the description. Uh, that's up 40% so far. That's unleveraged, no options, just, just the trade itself is up 40%. So that was a good one, wasn't it? Um, righty here. Any other questions? Anybody else? Anybody else? Pop them in the chat here. That's why we do this live. Um, but yeah, clean energy is one of those things. You seem very cultivated. You mean I um I got watered sufficiently? <laughs> uh, that's very kind of you to say. C Limited, yeah. C is it down ninety percent or something like that? Let me have a look. By the way, if you haven't already, sign up for my live trading training this coming Thursday, ten a.m. Eastern time. That's New York time, and you will learn precisely. I will teach you exactly how I'm up 70 odd percent this year so far, 72 percent ROCE this year, and how you could do the same kind of trades. And it takes like a couple hours a week and it isn't rocket science. A 12 year old can do it. The reason people don't do it is because they just think it's too good to be true. So come and join me and, and, and you'll see exactly how it works. It isn't all that difficult and all of that. Well, what were you talking about? C, S, E, not in the economy. Here we go limited so earnings were obviously a cataclysmic disaster at least the guidance must have been i i have can't say that i read them and it's down it's down a fair bit isn't it it was worth what was it worth at one point oh dear oh dear he says i don't know it was it was oh god yeah it was a 360. okay we got a little overexcited obviously I've never owned any C. I like a view of the C, but I've never bought this. I looked into this a little bit. It sort of seemed to me like a little bit of a an Alibaba in Southeast Asia kind of thing, right? But yeah, it looks bad. Sorry to say, it just looks bad. Yesterday, I think it's another sell signal. We're down again pre-market. So no, I don't think the, we've bottomed out yet. I, I just think this is a falling knife. And... Um, is there any options volume on this? Can, can we can we trade this and make some money at least? SE, we looked at it the other day and we couldn't find any volume. There we go. Um, no, there is some volume actually. So, and again, it's not financial advice, whatever I look at, but look at this chart here. It's just falling off a cliff, isn't it? There it is. Um, crikey, let's just look at three months. Anyway, we, we know it's falling a lot. So 50 day moving average line, doesn't even make the window. That's how far up it is. So what could you do? IV is surprisingly low. So again, maybe a bear put. Somewhere above it. Not that far above it. Oh, okay, that's a wrong, wrong, wrong week. 18% till next week, as long as we stay below 37 Not, not like shamazing, as Nicole Scherzinger says. Ah, that is a random ass reference, isn't it? Uh, so 18%, yeah, I, I don't know. Could do something like that. I, it doesn't scream I, I want to because it's only four days trading. Like these things can have erratic bounces. So, but no, it doesn't look good. And I, I can't find a way to make money out of it. So uh, let's move on. Um, how did you close the AMD? So, I, how do I close it? What do you mean? You mean in, in the broker? There's literally a button in your broker. You click on a trade here and you, I've already set a close up all up for this. You just click close. That's literally it. Literally just close the thing. Um, as simple as that. And you can automate that. You can see for this trade here, I've already got a close order here, which would take profits at half the max profit. That's generally my, 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 my sort of rule of thumb. Uh, what do you think about foot lockup? Ah, uh, yeah. Mm. Earnings, again, I have not read them, but the market reaction is sort of all I need to know. It wasn't good. <laughs> it was it was cataclysmically bad. And he dropped from 23 to $16 in one trading day on monstrous volume. Now, they did on Thursday recover 5.5%. So people obviously thought this was a little overdone. 
And we did a trade on that. And what was our trade? Well, the trade essentially was, was this. He said, well, it could fall a little bit more, but it looks like it's recovering. So we did a bullish trade, but below the share price, like two, three dollars, two, two dollars below or so. And that again made us money very quickly because it did bounce up. So yeah, I've never owned Foot Locker. I don't think I ever will own a retailer that sells trainers. I just don't see the moat. I mean, okay, locations and all of that, but I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't really get the business. So for me, it's just something I trade, to be honest with you. Um, just tuned in. What I miss, indeed. Doesn't feel like most retail is bad at the moment. It is. And, and if you are a long-term investor, maybe that's the time to start buying it, right? I think that's always one way to look at it. If everybody hates it, does everybody hate it sufficiently to be at a decent valuation? Could Macy's bounce back? A anything can happen, although I wouldn't really put my money into large department stores. I just... Okay, my feeling is just that retail is going to be a tough space because I can click a button and get it on Amazon in a day or same day or in some places in the world in two hours. Like, and they can exchange it and I can order it in all sizes. I mean, I literally did that. I was in London last week. I ordered the same pair of shoes in two colors and two sizes. I know it's not exactly green and good for the environment, but I really needed a pair of flip-flops <laughs> it was desperate times um I, I, and and you do and i kept two and i sent two back right and uh, must that make me a bad person it's just convenient isn't it i couldn't be bothered to go into a shop and see if they have it and find it and try, try it on and talk to a sales assistant and he's going to go i'm going to go back and see if we got it you know and then dawdle out while they've checked them their phone while they're, they're back there i mean so I, I think retail will exist at a level where at the, the highest level, the super premium, and at the super low end. I think that's kind of where it sits because the super low end, people just want to walk in and they want to dig around in a basket and they want to pick up something that's, you know, 99 cents. And at the high end, if you're buying a jumper that's 3,000 pounds or dollars, you might want to try it on, right? Or... Uh, so I think that's kind of it. So I think the super high-end department stores will survive because, again, the brands pay rent and commission. But anything in between, and I know Macy's is fairly high-end, but I'm not sure if it's high-end enough um, to survive in all the cities. I think that's kind of what I think. Where do you shop online in Hong Kong? Um, well, Taobao <laughs> is amazing. You can get everything. Absolutely everything. That's pretty much where I shop online and, and a little bit of Alibaba, but mostly Taobao because it comes the next day. Um, I have also for food and, and, and groceries and stuff is amazing. And then obviously there are loads of like smaller people. Uh, Francesco, I appreciate that. You're very kind. Do you hold, you hold any RXP, XRP? No. If you're looking for a kind word on crypto, not really your man. I'm not against it. I totally get the whole blockchain thing being amazing for many applications, but... I, I don't have any money in crypto. I, I have had a little bit of money in Ethereum and Bitcoin and a few other things, but I, I'm, I'm out of that. Um, and BlockFi has got the rest. <laughs> Isn't it true that solar wind and, and others pollute less? It depends on what pollutant you count, right? It's a bit like the the whole uh, carbon neutral thing. Well, it can pollute, can pollute other ways. As long as it isn't carbon, it's all good. Like nuclear is carbon neutral. A bit ironic that nuclear is now ESG green, you know, rated. So I think it's a racket, all of it. And I'd rather just try and do my best to just create as little pollutants as possible. But of course, I use electricity. I use aircon. I use lights. I use, you know, I stream to you guys. So you can't avoid it completely. But it's it's just, if you've seen wind farms, like this could be a wind farm out here in the sea, south side of China Sea. If you look at far enough on a really clear day, you see it. Uh, and you just think, it's a pristine islands. They're like pink dolphins swimming around. And you go in there and you lay concrete foundations and cables and you put a wind farm out there. Is that green? I, I, I don't know. I don't know it is, really. Um, not really sure. But, you know. Do you invest in property? Absolutely. Yeah. Huge fan. Huge fan. I, th I, think, I think all asset classes are good. Uh, you just, yeah, it's, it's all good. I think diversification is really the key. 
Uh, Giovanni, does it make sense to keep a portfolio when you know that minus 30 to 50% is coming without hedging? Well, if you know that, if you actually know that, you would set on, up some bearish trades and you'd make a killing. But the challenge with investing is you never know it, right? And that's why it's hard. So you can you can hedge. I think it's a, it's a good thing to do. And um, it's pretty cheap still. And then you have less downside. Or you can just have a longer time horizon. So almost the hedging is most important for those who have a shorter time horizon. So if you are already retired or your income isn't relatively low because you're only doing a little bit, then hedging is actually more important. If you've got income gushing in from five streams in all directions, then you love a falling market because you can buy more stocks cheaply, right? So there we go. Um, what do you think of SoFi? I like it. I think it's, in my view, the, the fintech company that's actually run really well. It's got really, really good management. It executed really, really well considering that their core business basically got, you know, shot by by the Biden administration because they wanted to buy themselves a few, few votes. So I think they've done very, very well. And I think they'll continue to. But it's a sector that isn't very popular at the moment. Don't know why. The whole fintech thing is kind of like under the hammer. Um, but yeah, stock at the moment is dawdling sideways a little bit. Not, not, no, no momentum in there really. It looks, it looks a little bearish, but at least it's up half a point today, so that'll, that'll help a little. Martin, that, that, that is good, and I'm sure it's going to get more and more efficient. And, and, and I don't know if that'll be the answer. No, no idea. I mean, they've been, they've been touting solar for the last thirty years. I still think it works largely of subsidies, but I could be wrong on that. I, I'm not sure it would be viable without. Um, Lost in BKK, you are late. You're late again. Why? <laughs> what are you doing? Don't get your homework. Uh, Fukushima water release. Oh, that's a nice topic, isn't it? Yeah, I don't really know what to say about that either. I mean, they've done it before, done it a few times. But it's it's carbon neutral. <laughs> it is, honestly. So yeah, I, I don't know what to say about that one, honestly. I go back to start and catch up. Brilliant. Uh, what do you think about SMCI? I do quite like it. Um, this moves with NVIDIA at the moment. That's a little bit the challenge, right? That's a little bit like when Tesla has that impact on all EV stocks or something. You sort of like or um, what, was, what was I going to say? The um, What's the crypto platform? <laughs> Christ. What's happening here this morning with my mind? Um, coin, Coinbase, right? I, 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 the business is amazing, right? But it moves together with Bitcoin. So you're kind of not really investing in the right thing there. I feel it's a little bit like that with SMCI. It's just moving with, with NVIDIA rather than on its own, own volition. And TSMC, yeah, uh, TSMC similarly, yes. Um, and, and yes, you, you do have a bit of a, what happens here? TSMC. Um, this one's listed in. What's the ticker? TSMC, ADR, it's listed in Singapore, not listed in the US. Taiwan Semiconductor. Taiwan Semi. PSM. Ah, okay, okay, okay. One letter too many. Um, yeah, again, I think just overlay, overlay NVIDIA and fairly close correlation. So that's a little bit the concern, right? That at these price levels, is that is that a good deal or not? Um, and I think it's probably again a question of out of time frame. Like if your time frame is long enough, it's it's all going to be all right in the wash. Uh, Dan, thanks very much for that. Cobra, good morning to you. Some people expect Nvidia might fall to two two forty. Gravity, gravity, my friend, all possible at the moment. The way Nvidia is delivering, the way they're getting orders, I don't think that's happening. 
But when these growth numbers go back from the 80% to 20%, which will happen at some point, then yes, I think, I think the rock will fall. And a good example there is Oracle. Do you remember, was it Oracle or was it Cisco? Cisco, wasn't it? I think it was Cisco. If you go to uh, the good old 2000s, which I do remember. I worked in a dot-com startup then in 1999. Here we go. So this was Cisco because Cisco owned the internet. The internet was real. It was the future and Cisco systems owned it. Nothing could happen without Cisco in the internet. So the stock went from a dollar to 80. And then that's because their growth rate was insane, 80% and so on. And then the growth rate dropped to 20% and the stock lost 80% of its value and it's never really recovered. I mean, no, still hasn't recovered. So that's, I think, a potential for NVIDIA, I'm not saying this quarter or even next year, but I just think it's something to bear in mind. Like nothing lasts forever. <laughs> uh, Andrea, Cisco, you're quite right. Thank you very much. Uh, Cobra said, you think a lot of the, uh, I, I, I don't think trade restrictions work. I, I just think it's impossible to police really impossible to police. Like what, what stops you from setting up a manufacturer in Malaysia that's owned by 15 entities that it's owned, each owned by 20 entities, each owned by nine trusts and six offshore enterprises and blah, de, blah, de, blah. And, you know, how do you track at what point does it become owned by the company that was on the block list? Like, and then what if they're traders, what if they're reselling it? Like, I, I just don't think these restrictions fundamentally work. They're, they're, Give me one ex time in history when sanctions have worked, like just one, right? So what do you think about HKD? You mean the currency, Hong Kong dollar, or is that a ticker? HKD? Oh, AMP Digital. Oh, I know nothing about it. Sorry, nothing at all. Never heard of a thing. What is it? Never heard of it. It's a... Trading at not a lot, $5 or something. What, what's going on with that stock? Why the crazy chart? So it's super, super, super speculative. I have no idea, to be honest with you. Um, but something that moves that erratically, I would be cautious of, honestly. This looks, this looks fishy. Very, very fishy. They do press releases. Market cap's a billion. Five percent years in increasing net profits. How, but how much? How much? Not a lot, I would have thought. Yeah, sorry, don't know anything about it. Um, <laughs> moving on. Um, Giovanni, who is going to be NVIDIA's true competitor? Hard to say, honestly. Hard to say. It could be one of the little guys. It could be AMD. It could be Intel. It could be... It's just you need quite a lot of capital to get into that game. So it's probably going to be restricted to one of the big, big guys. And will they catch up? I think they will, but it'll take some time. And that glorious moment will be NVIDIA's. And if you're a hardware business, which is, it is at the moment, I know they're moving to what software and subscriptions, and you have a 70% gross margin. If you watched my video on that yesterday, you, you are just you're in a unique position. You have a product that's better than everybody else. That's what, what that's, that's saying. But as soon as other people's product becomes equally good or almost as good, but maybe cheaper, but it can be a lot cheaper because you don't need a 70% gross margin to run a successful business, right? Someone else can do it for 50 or 40 or 30 and then you get that competition. So... Re if you're just shouting out like a ticker, like a, make it a question. Make it make it like a, you're saying Apple, Re, I appreciate that, but like you're hungry or you want an Apple or, you know, what, 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 what are you thinking about? Like, what do you want to know? I'd be very glad to answer it. Um, 
Giovanni, appreciate that comment on the on the NVIDIA video. So, yeah, where are we this morning? Let's have another another glance here at, um, it looks actually reasonably green, but NVIDIA is still red, Tesla is still red. Microsoft up and Apple being up is, is somewhat useful. Although often what happens, the first step, a stage of fear, is we pour our money into the large tech stocks. And then when we get really shaken and stirred by Jerome Powell, then we flee the Microsoft, Apple, and Amazons. And, and that's when the market actually comes down. So that's that's the real question. Banks are also up today. JP Morgan up 0.7%. And a little bit of a rebound in consumer d discretionary, like, like Nike is up a little bit here. Yeah, so that's kind of where we are at. At 10 a.m. today, in consumer inflation expectations. Let's hope that they are lower the 3.3 percent we expect that would be good for the market and five minutes later fed chair powell graces us with his presence charm wit and optimism and and will encourage the market to tank i think that's his plan so let's see thanks for the like button smash appreciate that um that always helps the subscribe button also helps tremendously so so do um, i have got another live scheduled at in about an hour and a bit, uh, we'll be live for Jerome Powell because this one matters. This one really matters. This is the, the second really big event this week after the NVIDIA earnings, which were impressive, but the market wasn't impressed sufficiently. Jerome Hakon saying, I'm expecting a, a hawkish Jerome, but you never know with a man. You never know. He might just had a really lovely morning. I don't know, good game of squash, massage, nice lunch, breakfast, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. You never really know with the guy. Is that whiskey? No, no, that's not. That's uh, hot water, which I highly recommend. Best thing you can do to yourself is drink hot, hot water. You feel amazing. Uh, William, I generally like to trade with a 45 day to expiration. I exit at 21. Although at the moment, I, I must say I'm deviating from that rule and I'm trading mostly weeklies because I'm just sort of doing a bit of momentum trading because um, I'm finding the market a little <laughs> a little hard to read. So I'm, I'm doing a bit of a mix, but doing mostly mostly weeklies at the moment. Um, and I appreciate you you liking that video. Much, much appreciated. Share it. Share it with your friends. And um, that always helps. You have no idea how much the algorithm lo loves that. So thank you very much for that. Hot water with cinnamon and lemon. And see, that's the Italian. They always got to make stuff fancy, right, Giovanni? Just plain hot water. It's good enough for me. <laughs> I'm going to run into the kitchen and tell my housekeeper, where's my cinnamon? Where's my lemon? Um, crush it. So... Do you ever go out further than 45 days? Not really. I just think from a capital use point of view, it becomes inefficient. Okay, it might occasionally be 48 or 49 days or whatever, just because you're in between you know, expiration dates. But much longer than that, and you're just not using your capital enough, I think. You're not turning it over quickly enough. That's kind of what I think. You've been in East Asia too long, perhaps. Kunmo, Ma, absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm converted. Hot water. Always on my desk. I get through about three liters a day of the stuff. It's amazing. So, um, <laughs> Giovanni, yeah. Uh, and Mint too, another one who he wants to get fancy. Uh, I appreciate you tuning in. Um, come and join me in uh, 45 minutes or, or thereabouts. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to Aaron Powell and what he's going to do, what he's going to say. Uh, and that's going to be fun. So, I appreciate your, um, your kind comments, Giovanni. Much appreciated. And I hope to see you in a little bit. This will forward you to that next live video in about an hour. So click on the remind me button and come and join our live trading webinar. If you want to see how we're up 70 something percent so far this year, RACE and 126 percent last year, then I'll teach it to you like the whole strategy. You get all of my strategy, all of it. And I think it will be an eye opener to most people. And you can ask me questions and so on. But you need to be registered. It won't be on YouTube. It's at felixfriends.org slash webinar. And that's next Thursday, 10 a.m. New York time. So put it in your diary. Sign up there right here, right now. Links down below in the description. Uh, thanks for tuning in.